So here we're gonna go over lesson number one, right? At one point one. We're gonna review region kinematics. And so to do now say as well, if a ball rolls uh between the middle of these two students, and if a ball rolls between the middle of these two students, uh 10 meters, well, how would each student label the position of the ball over those 10 meters? Well, let's say this guy is facing this way and, and the other student is facing that way. And, and the ball rolls between them, right? The ball rolls between them. So, this person, as the ball is rolling to him, uh, in his perspective, right? The perspective of the guy on the left. Well, he says that, well, the ball is rolling to his right. Right, so the ball is rolling uh, to his right. And he's going to label his positions as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that's how he was going to label them. Oh, but the guy on the on the left here, I mean, rather on the left, but the guy on the right here, well, he sees that the ball is actually rolling to his left. Right, so the ball is rolling uh, uh, to his left. And how is he going to label the positions? Well, he's going to label them negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on and so forth. And the idea I want to highlight here is the frame of reference, right? From what point of reference are you taking measurements from? Because that's very important in physics. It's very important in physics. We need to know exactly where you're taking measurements from because, well, if we take a look at, it at another location, from a different point of view, our measurements will differ. Here's a brief video on frame of reference. I suggest you watch it on your own time. I'm going to briefly describe frame of reference in less than 10 seconds. So let's say you see someone in a car. He's driving past you. You're standing there. You think that the person in the car is moving. Technically, he's moving with the car. So therefore, he is, in fact, moving in your perspective, in your frame of reference. But the person in the car, he doesn't feel like he's moving, right? He himself is stationary, whereas his surroundings, everything else is moving instead. So your frame of reference in his point of view is very much different than an observer. Now, I try to explain that in less than 10 seconds. I don't think you will get that in less than 10 seconds, but I suggest you watch the video. Perfect. But as we move on, we're going to briefly go over scalars and vectors again a scalar is a quantity that only has a magnitude and right? magnitude is only in a, just a number whereas vectors are quantities that have both magnitude and direction and so direction is important here vectors have direction distance versus displacement right distance total length traveled displacement final position minus initial position displacement is a vector this is a scalar. This is how far you are from where you started. Uh, so the example question here, right? Was your total distance traveled? 5 plus 7, 12 kilometers traveled. Here, basketball, you run a basketball court, uh, run the court and back. Was your total distance traveled? Right, you guys have to realize that, well, as you're running the court and back, well, you're running a court, running back, that's 30 meters, right? And this is also uh, 30 meters. So in one time, you travel a distance of 60 meters. And so you travel a distance of 60 meters. If you do this three times, well, then you've traveled 180 meters. Right, because you're calculating total distance and he does it three times right so running the court and then back is one time uh let's do this i guess so you have a baseball player now you have a baseball player uh so you're running 27.4 meters uh to first base Right, and then you overrun it by three meters, then come back three meters, and you're comparing. Well, compared to your total distance, well, how is your displacement uh, compared to it? Right, what is the magnitude of the displacement compared to your total distance? Well, your total distance traveled here, 
is 33.4 meters, right? That's my total distance. Whereas my displacement, while well, I end up at first base and I started at batter's box, well, the distance between first base and batter's box is 27.4 meters. And so that's my displacement, right? Well, how is my displacement compared to my distance? My displacement is 6 meters shorter uh, than my distance. Right? And so it's going to be C there. Uh, this is you're using a Pythagorean theorem here, right? So you have Pythagorean theorem. So you have a sailboat. You you travel forty meters north, right? And then you travel forty meters east. Well, what is compared to your starting position? Well, your new position of your sailboat is that what? Well, what's this displacement right here? And you're going to use the Dagon theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. And then the answer will be uh, D, 57. Right? See, so you're doing the same thing here using the Dagon theorem, except this time they give you the displacement vector instead. Uh, so you, they give you your displacement vector, and you actually need to find out what your perpendicular components are. All right, so that's that. Average speed. So again, V can mean either speed or velocity. Right? And the V, the bar above the V means average. Now again, if your V there means speed, because speed is a scalar quantity, right? Speed is a scalar quantity. The speed is a scalar quantity. Well, if V means speed, right? If the problem is looking for speed, well, then this D must here must also be a scalar quantity. And the scalar quantity is, is that it is distance, right? And same thing. And then you can, you guys can do this practice problem yourself. You can do this yourself, right? Here you're taking average speed. You're doing 15 plus 21 divided by two. Uh, that can you do it yourself. Here you're doing two pi R. Right, so here you're go you're going in a circular path. How do you measure distance in a circular path? Well, distance in a circular path is two pi r. Right, and so you have your time here, you have your radius, and you solve for average speed. Now, if on the other hand, if you have if you're looking for velocity, right? If you're looking for average velocity here. Well, if you're looking for average velocity, well, then your displacement, or rather your D here, will mean displacement, because again, that is your vector quantity. Right? This is your vector quantity. Uh, and then you can pretty much do your displacement right here. Okay. I really just want to get to these AP physics questions. That's why I'm kind of like kind of just rushing through everything. If you, if you haven't realized by now, I, I am basically rushing through everything. So, uh, so here I'm gonna go a little bit slower. All right, so I run around circular track with radius 25 meters for four and a half time. I mean, four and a quarter, four point and a quarter times before stopping. It takes me 16 minutes, right? And what is my speed? So again, your speed here, since we're looking for speed, right? Well, this D right here must mean what? Well, it must mean distance because speed is also a scalar, right? So D is scalar, which means that distance is the scalar version of D. Uh, so my time here is 60 minutes, which is 60 seconds, right? And so, or rather, no, one minute and 60, one minute is 60 seconds. So 60 minutes has 960 seconds. Your radius is 25 meters. Uh, you go around four and a half times before stopping. You want to know what your speed is. So essentially, right now, right? So essentially, right now, um, what you have to, what you guys have to realize is that well, since you're traveling around the circle four point twenty five times, right? So you're traveling around the circle four point twenty five times, and if you know that your distance around a circle is your circumference. Right, so v bar is equal to two pi r because that's your circumference. Well, if you if you travel around this path four point twenty five times, I have to multiply my circumference by four point twenty five. 
over t, which is 960. And then you get your velocity. I don't have a calculator on me, but, uh, but you can do it yourself. You can do it yourself. And also, I want to go back to if it wasn't clear that he's traveling around this circle four and a half times, it stays in the problem, right? So he goes around four times, right? One, two, three, four, and then uh, it's 0.25, one fourth time. So he goes around the track one fourth. Now, um, now 11b says, well, what is your velocity, right? So what is my velocity here? What's my velocity? But yet, okay, so you have to realize, well, if you're looking for your velocity, well, this D here, well, this D here means displacement. So technically, you do need to know where you ended up and where you started. So if you go around a circle, right, so you go around one, so you let's say you start here, so this is your start. You go around one full lap, that's one, two, right, three, and then four, and you go back to your start, and you go 0.25 times more around the track, right? You go around the track one fourth uh, of the track. So you kind of end up here. Now your displacement is not this curved path, right, of the circle. You don't care about that. That's not your di displacement. Your displacement is, well, how far is your end point from your start point, that's the only thing you care about there, right? That's this is the only thing you care. This the length of this path. Well, how do we calculate the length of this path? Well, it turns out we have our radius, right? We have our radius. We have a radius of twenty five meters. What do you, how do you think we could solve for this length? Well, we can solve for the length by using a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that's what you're going to do, right? So you're going to solve for displacement using this formula. Um, then once you get your displacement, you plug it in here, and then you get your average velocity. Uh, let's do 11C. Now, 11C, I didn't do this with students in class. So if you're a student in class that is watching this right now, I didn't do it with you at this point. I did it with you at the end. But regardless, it is not on your notes. So I am going to... Uh, just go over it really quick, right? Because so, it is an important question. So we're going to identify our knowns in this problem, right? And so a crazy camel walks for 450 meters. And I'm going to put that as D1. Put this as D1. Because right? he, he walks for another 100 meters. He hops on a bicycle and rides for another 100 meters. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that as D2. Riding with a speed of 25 meters per second. So that's V2, right? So this is my second velocity. In the same direction. And the average speed of the crazy camel for the entire trip is 7 meters per second. So the average speed for the camel for the entire trip is 7 meters per second. And the question is asking, well, what is the speed that the camel walked? What I want you guys to think about is this. When you're dealing with V1 and then D1, the only variable here that can actually ever fit into this formula is time one. Nothing else can fit in here, right? Because for the first part of the trip, you walked 450 meters. So he has its own velocity here, right? There's its own separate velocity. It's only separate distance, which means that there's a certain time for the camel to walk that distance. So it's its own time as well. And then you also have the other side of things, right? You have the second velocity, right? Which, which, he, which the, he hopped on a bicycle and ran uh, and rode for. So, and you have the second distance and then you have the second time. And, and now where, where does the average velocity come in, right? So the average velocity is, well, the average of the entire trip. And for the entire trip, you care about your total distance and your total time. And where is that? Well, how does this help you? Because right? you know your total distance is D1 plus D2. And your total time is T1 plus T2. 
and so these are the three things you kind of want to go for, want to analyze when you're solving these types of problems. So you want to know what V1 is, right? So you want to know what V1 is, which means, well, I need to know what T1 is. But we don't know what T1 is. Can we find out what T1 is, right? We, have to, we can find it out, right? If we use this formula right here, we can figure out what T1 is. Well, can we figure out what T2 is first, right? Because we need time total. We, not, we need our total time. And our second time. Can we solve for our second time? Yeah. Because this formula right here, we can solve for T2. And if you ever get stuck, try and just solve for these very minute things, right? Just or rather not minute, but solve for every variable that you can solve for. And that would lead you to the right track. The question looks very difficult uh, on the, looks very difficult initially, but once you get used to it and, and start practicing, it becomes a lot simpler, right? It comes to a lot easier to handle. And so you have 25, let's use this form, right? All right, so we'll do uh, v, V2, D2 over T2. So V2 is 25, uh, D2 is 100. T2 is right there. It's going to multiply by T2 on both sides. So now we have 25 T2. So now we're going to divide by 25 on both sides. T2, four seconds. So at the time, uh, my camel walk was four seconds. So now let's plug it in into this entire a large formula, right? So we know our average velocity, our average velocity is seven. My total distance here, right, is D1 plus D2. And we know that D1 is 450, and D2 is 100. We know our total time, which is gonna be a T1, and we know T, a T2, right? So we know T2, which is a four. Actually, I'm gonna do, just gonna do it total time. It's gonna be easier this way. So times total t on both sides, right? So t there, 7 t, 100 plus 450, 550, divided by 7, divided by 7. Ah, uh, what is this? 49, 7, 16. I guess I need a calculator, right? So let me just consult a calculator. Hopefully it doesn't take too much time. So 550 divided by 7 is 78.6, 78.6 seconds. All right, so we know our total time now, so, and we know that our total time is a T1 plus T2, right? So the total time is 78.6 seconds, T1 is T1, T2 is plus 4. So minus four, and then T1 is 74.6 seconds. And that's, so that's the time I took to, or for uh, the first, for first trip. Now that we have our time for the first trip, we, well, we can finally now solve for V1, right? So we have V1, D1 over T1, D1 was 450. T1 was 74.6. Uh, so 450 divided by 74.6 is around 6 seconds. Okay, I'm just going to round it 6 seconds. Somewhere around there. And that's how we solve it, right? So that's how we solve these types of problems. So let's move on to the second one. Let's move on to the second one, the other questions. Well, then this one. So an eccentric emu runs 20 meters per second, right? So that's our first trip, right? So you can say that, well, V1 is 20 meters per second. And your time here is five minutes, which is essentially 300 seconds. So that's T1 for his first part of the trip. And once it's tired, the emu runs at a slower speed for the next hour. Well, we don't know what the slower speed is, but we do know the hour there. So the time for the second part is um, 3,600 seconds. The average velocity of this emu 
is 15 meters per second. And so what speed was the emu running when he was tired? Uh, so they're looking for V2. Can we solve for this, right? Again, list everything that you, you might want to solve for, right? Which is D, D1 and D2. And again, we know that V1 is equal to D1 over T2. We know that V2 is equal to D2 over T2. I'm sorry, this, this right here is 1. Apologize, guys. That's 1 there. This is, this is T1 there. Uh, V bar is equal to D total. V total. Which is essentially D1 plus D2. T1 plus T2. Now. Uh, things we can solve for first. Well, we can probably solve for D1 our distance. Uh, that this person took for the first trip. Right, so let's do that first. Let's do, uh, so it's V1, right? So V1 is equal to D1 over T1. And V1 is 20, and then D1 is D1, and then T is 300. So multiply 300 on both sides. And that gives you six thousand meters and now v bar is equal to well now that we have d1 technically we have d1 right and we um, well now we need to solve for uh probably d2 i need to solve for d2 well how do we solve for d2 well let's just get the total distance first right, this is traveled first right so we can actually do this, V bar, D total, the T total. Oh, I just realized this should be T total, T total right there. Uh, V bar, which is 15, uh, D total, T total, right? It's 300 plus 3,600, which is 3,900. 3,900 on both sides. Uh, 15 times 3,900. 15 times 3,900. 58,500. Is the total. Alright, so that's my total distance traveled. But I know my distance travel in the first trip, which means now I know my distance travel in the second part of the trip. Because I know that D total is equal to D1 plus D2. So D1 is 6,000 plus D2 minus 6,000 on both sides. 52,500 D2. So that's the uh, second uh, distance travel, and now we can solve for the second speed, right? So V2 right there, V2, D2, which is 52, 500, T, 3600, and whatever the answer is, is the answer. You guys can, you guys have your own calculators, but that's pretty much the final step there, all right? Cool.